This is a video about NPK fertilisers, one of the very last topics in AQA GCSE Chemistry Paper 2. In this video we will explain why farmers use NPK fertilisers, explain why they can be described as formulations, describe the composition of an NPK fertiliser, describe where the raw materials for NPK fertilisers come from and what the process in manufacturing them is, and evaluate the use of different fertilisers. Fertilisers are substances that farmers will spread on their fields in order to make their crops grow faster, be healthier and generally increase the yield. A crop is any plant that you're planning to eat and the yield is about how much food you can make from a field of a certain size. Obviously, improving all of these things is a good thing for the farmers but there are some disadvantages. Fertilisers can be quite expensive and spreading them on is time consuming but also if you add too much it can cause major environmental problems. When it rains, any excess fertiliser can run off into nearby rivers and lakes and cause a problem called eutrophication. There are probably already algae, tiny photosynthetic organisms living in those rivers and those lakes, and when they get a load of fertiliser, they also grow really fast and really well. Eventually, they run out of nutrients, and then they will die, and that leads to rapid growth of bacteria, which can deoxygenate the water. Not ideal. It's also a waste of your money. You could be asked to demonstrate that you know what a fertiliser is by suggesting why world use of fertilisers has increased by nearly 25% from the turn of the millennium to 2020. Well, since the millennium, the population has expanded from about 6.1 billion to nearly 7.8 billion people. That's a lot more mouths to feed, so we need a lot more food. Fertilisers allow farmers to grow more crops and have higher yields, so there is more food available. NPK fertilisers are synthetic fertilisers, which means that they've been manufactured from chemicals. That can be contrasted with natural fertilisers like manure, which is made from animal dung. NPK fertilisers are an example of a formulation, which means a mixture that's been designed as a useful product, where the amounts of the different components of the mixture have been really carefully calibrated so they're always exactly the same. NPK fertilisers contain nitrogen, which is necessary for plants building proteins, Phosphorus, which is necessary for the making DNA, and a molecule called ATP, which is really important in respiration, and potassium, which is important for plants opening and closing their stomata. The fertilisers are called NPK because those are the chemical symbols for nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium on the periodic table. Here's another example of an NPK fertiliser, and also a picture of my parents' dog Kiffin, who wanted to get involved for some reason. These NPK fertilisers don't contain the raw elements nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus. They contain compounds that have those elements inside them. So you've already learnt that in the harbour process a product called ammonia is made and that ammonia can be used to manufacture ammonium salts and nitric acid, both of which contain nitrogen. The potassium and the phosphorus have to be mined out of the ground in potassium chloride, potassium sulphate and phosphate rock. The potassium chloride and potassium sulphate can be used directly in fertilisers, but the phosphate rock can't because it's a rock. So instead we have to do something called the Odder process. In this you take your phosphate rock and you treat it with either nitric acid or less commonly sulfuric acid. And because phosphate rock tends to contain quite a lot of calcium phosphate, this does a reaction which makes phosphoric acid and also calcium nitrate if you've used nitric acid or calcium sulphate if you use sulfuric acid. And it's the phosphoric acid that we want, that's what's going to be added to the fertiliser as a source of phosphorus. There aren't a huge number of facts for you to memorise about NPK fertilisers and that means it's quite likely that you'll get a question where you're asked to suggest or evaluate. So an evaluate question would be a compare and contrast one, whereas the suggest question is asking you to come up with an idea and it's not something that's in the specification, it's not a fact that you're supposed to have learnt, it's about you taking your knowledge and applying it. So here we're asked to suggest two reasons why potassium chloride is cheaper than ammonium phosphate and they've given you these little flowcharts that show how each of those is made. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is that there are more raw ingredients needed to make the ammonium phosphate. We've got three different starting materials, whereas for the potassium chloride there's only one. The second thing is that it's a much more complicated process, and that tends to be time consuming and tends to cost money. Alternatively, you could be asked why a farmer would use both of those compounds in treating his crops. So they might not use the word NPK fertiliser in this question because they're asking you to identify that crops need nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium for their best growth and that by adding both of those compounds between them you have all three of those elements. 
MPK fertilizers are an example of a formulation and formulations are a perfect opportunity for the exam board to test you on your math skills, particularly percentages and ratios. In this question, they tell us that a fertilizer contains 5.8% potassium by weight. So therefore, what mass of potassium could be extracted from a three kilogram box of fertilizer? And then I'm asked to give my answer in grams. So I need to work out what 5.8% of three kilograms would be. And there are lots of different ways I could do this. I could do 0.058 times three, or I could do 5.8 times three and then divide the whole lot by 100 instead. And I get an answer of 0.174 kilograms. Now I need to know how to convert kilograms to grams. And what I do is I multiply it by a thousand. It's always a factor of a thousand in science. So that's going to be 174 grams. A different question might tell me that a fertilizer contains nitrogen to phosphorus to potassium in a 9 to 6.1 to 15.8 ratio. Realistically, you're probably not going to get that ratio in a GCSE exam. I would expect them to give you whole numbers. But seeing as I'm using pictures of fertilizers that were in the greenhouse, this is what I've got. So if the box contains 270 grams of nitrogen, how much potassium does it contain? So I know that the nitrogen and the potassium are in the ratio 9 to 15.8. So to start with, I need to figure out, well, if 270 grams is 9, what's 1? So 270 divided by 9 is 30. And now that I know that that's what 1 represents, I can multiply it up by 15.8 to find out that it will contain 474 grams of potassium. Thank you for watching and I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos coming soon.